It had been several months since they opened the bar. There was a call from Cloud, who was out collecting provisions. He wanted to know if it would be okay to print up a lifetime voucher to eat and drink for free at Seventh Heaven in exchange for something. Tifa agreed, never asking what it was for. She knew Cloud must have wanted something desperately if he was offering to trade something like that. It was night, and Cloud came back on a motorcycle. It was a model unlike any Tifa had seen before. Since then, he had been adjusting it whenever he could spare the time in between his jobs. He brought engineers he had met to discuss modifying his new bike. It seemed quite a few people came to help Cloud complete his modifications. Marlene and her young neighborhood friends watched. The sight reassured Tifa. We really are becoming a family. There were many times when Cloud would leave Midgar for their supplies. The destination was mainly calm. He usually had to rent a bike or a truck. Or sometimes a chocobo. But now that he had his own bike that he could use freely, he would be able to make longer trips. Sometimes he would bring home rare foods to surprise Tifa. One night, there was a call for Cloud. After talking on the phone for a few minutes, Cloud said he had to go out for a while. Where are you going? How should I tell you this? Cloud explained how there were many times when he was asked to deliver things while coming back with supplies. The caller was one of the store owners who shared some of his vegetables with them. It seemed there was something he desperately needed Cloud to deliver that night. Cloud gazed at Tifa like a kid who had just had his secrets revealed. Why are you looking at me like that? Well, I'm sorry I kept quiet about it. <laughs> about what? Tifa was smiling a little. Doing things without consulting you. She burst out in laughter. Cloud told her about how he got paid a little for delivering items. He explained how he felt guilty spending it all on the modifications for the bike. Tifa thought he was just like a kid. It may have been a little sad that Cloud had found another world that I didn't know about, but the fact that his world was expanding was a welcoming thought. Maybe this is kind of what a mother feels like. Tifa walked Cloud outside enjoying the new feeling welling up inside her. Tifa learned to cope with the sins in her consciousness. There's no forgetting what happened. A day may come when I'm punished, but until that day, I'm gonna look ahead and live on, not just taking, but proving to myself that I can give too. Tifa encouraged Cloud to turn the delivery service into a legitimate business. They could just take requests at the bar, as for dealing with calls, Marlene or herself could do it. Cloud was hesitant at first, but after sleeping on it, he came around to the idea. I didn't really understand his reasons for hesitating, but I figured he was just holding back for some reason. And so, that was the start of the Strife Delivery Service. Midgar was the center of their business, but they also delivered all around the world. Well, anywhere Cloud could reach by bike. Just like Seventh Heaven, the business was a great success. At that time, sending things wasn't so easy for people. Monsters were still roaming, and many roads were still cut off after the live stream burst forth from the ground. The work, which involved traveling from one corner of the world to the next, wasn't something just anyone could do. But it was the kind of job he had been seeking, and his services were in high demand. Tifa thought it was wonderful how Cloud, who wasn't very sociable, was doing a job that connected people. After Cloud started the delivery service, their family life changed quite a lot, and not in a good way. Besides the morning and late at night, 
Kyle was hardly ever home. Naturally, that meant there were fewer chances for the three of them to talk. Tifa tried closing the bar once a week, but that didn't necessarily mean Cloud could do the same. He almost never turned anyone down. I just wanted us to be able to take a day off together now and then, but maybe that was a little selfish of me. During that time, it was Marlene who noticed a change in Cloud. She told Tifa how Cloud would sometimes space out and not listen to her. Cloud never really approached Marlene to talk in the first place, but I'm sure he never ignored her if she talked to him. I knew that Cloud was, in his own way, trying to get along with Marlene. I figured that was just how people who weren't comfortable around children managed to cope. I told her that Cloud was probably tired, but it bothered me. Marlene is a child who is sensitive to the changes in adults. On their day off, Tifa and Marlene were cleaning the room Cloud used as an office. Lots of receipts lay scattered about. One of them caught Tifa's eye. Client, Elmira Gainsborough. Item, Bouquet. Destination, The Forgotten City. Tifa put the receipt away with the others as if nothing had happened. But her hands were trembling. Delivering packages around the world also meant he was traveling around his past. She knew that Cloud was in great pain after Aerith's death. He wasn't able to protect her. Cloud was trying to overcome that in the Vaughn. But going back to the place where she was taken from him might tear his heart apart even more. It was night, and they had closed the bar. Cloud was drinking, even though he rarely did. His glass was empty. There was something Tifa wanted to talk to him about. She thought about it for a moment, before going over and filling his glass. Mind if I join you? I want to drink alone. Hearing that, Tifa lost her composure. Then drink in your room. Barrett would call from time to time. He almost never talked about himself, and usually asked how Marlene was doing. Every time, he would talk to Marlene at the end. She must have assumed Tifa couldn't hear her sad voice as she spoke to her father. Cloud and Tifa aren't getting along very well. No matter what feelings Cloud and I have between us, we can't drag Marlene into it. Tifa made every effort to talk to Cloud. When Marlene was near, she would talk about things that she felt wouldn't be too serious. Cloud seemed bewildered by the way Tifa changed, but guessing at what she was doing, he always went along with it. They got Marlene to join in with the conversations too. I thought it was going pretty well, but I couldn't talk about what I really wanted to talk about. I just didn't know what to say. One morning, Tifa shared a funny story she heard from a customer. That's really something that can't be done. It can't be done! All of the adults were surprised and looked at Marlene. You've told us that story before and Cloud just gives the same answer every time! It wasn't going well, but we were together. It was because we were family. We lived in the same house and we were living by working together. Maybe there wasn't much conversation or many smiles, but we were family. After checking that Cloud was asleep, she spoke softly to him. We'll be alright, won't we? Of course, there was no answer. All she heard was him breathing softly as he slept. I wondered if the fact that he was sleeping here meant that he was part of the family. Do you... love me? Hello? Cloud opened his eyes with a perplexed look in his face. Hey Cloud, do you love... Marlene? Yeah, but sometimes I don't know how to approach her. 
Even though you've been together this long? Maybe that just isn't enough. Same with you and I? Cloud didn't answer. Sorry, weird question. I... Don't apologize. It's my problem. Cloud closed his eyes again. Why can't it be ours? There was no answer. Not long after that, Cloud brought Denzel home with him. He was unconscious when he was carried into the bar. He had used Cloud's phone, which was left with his bike, to ring the bar. Picking up the phone, Tifa was worried about what happened to Cloud at first, but soon she realized there was something wrong with the boy. Cloud found him as he lay on the ground. Tifa listened as Denzel cried out in pain, unable to do anything to help him. Then she heard footsteps. It was Cloud. He picked up the phone. What's wrong? Is the boy okay? He seems to be in pain. Why don't you bring him back with you? It looks like he has geostigma. Tifa couldn't reply to what Cloud had said right away. Geostigma was a disease that had spread throughout the world since the day the livestream halted Meteor. Its cure hadn't been found yet. The patients also varied. Some would look healthy, so no one would suspect that they were sick. But some died right after contracting the disease. Then, the most important point to Tifa, there was a rumor that geostigma was transmittable. It could infect someone in the family. Although based on Tifa's experience, she believed that it would not be transmittable, or else many healthy people in the world would have died already, though she still felt uncomfortable. Moreover, the rumor was persistent no matter what the truth was. Consequently, it might affect the image of the bar. However, she already told Cloud to bring him home. She couldn't go back on her word because of rumors. I heard Geostigma wasn't contagious. Cloud knew what she was thinking from her hesitation. She realized that Cloud really wanted to bring the child home. Yeah, bring him with you. I'll bring him through the back door. Is there anyone that can look after Marlene? Yeah. Hanging up the phone, Tifa wondered at Cloud's concern for Marlene and the bar. In the end, she understood. Cloud thought that she would oppose. Even so, he wanted to bring him back. Tifa wanted to know the reason, but as soon as she saw Denzel, those questions faded away, and she knew she had to take care of him. There are lots of children with the stigma. They're building homes for them because of all the children who lost their parents. Yet, why did he bring Denzel here? Just as Tifa was about to ask him, Cloud muttered something. This kid came to my place. Huh? What do you mean? Uh, I mean... Once Denzel had recovered his strength, Tifa listened to his story about everything that had happened to him before he arrived here. Denzel was supposed to come here. His parents were among the victims when Sector 7 was destroyed. It was destroyed because of Avalanche. That's why we had to take responsibility and raise him. He met Cloud so that he could come to me. Tifa told Cloud and Marlene that she wanted to welcome Denzel into their family. Cloud nodded silently, but Marlene was full of joy. At first, Denzel was persistent in helping them as thanks for taking care of him, but his heart began opening up to them as he helped with the bar and Cloud's work. The number of customers had visibly decreased. The reason was clear, but Tifa, Cloud, and even Marlene never mentioned it. It was night, and the bar was closed. Tifa was cleaning up in the kitchen. She looked up from the dishes toward the center table. There sat the president of the Strife Delivery Service, Cloud, and his two assistants, Marlene and Denzel. Denzel often suffered because of geostigma, but on days when the fever and pain subsided, he would hang around with Cloud. Usually Cloud would spend most of his days out at work, 
So once he was home, it was Denzel's precious time to spend with his hero. Yes, Cloud was a hero to Denzel, saving him as the symptoms of geostigma appeared without warning, suffering from the fear of death. The way Cloud carried himself, the bike he rode, it was everything Denzel looked up to. Denzel wanted to ask everything about Cloud's past. Even if he had questions Tifa could have answered, he would always wait until Cloud returned home. Once, half jokingly, she told him that she was the one who cooked the meals. Denzel put on a grown up voice and informed her that he was the one who cleaned up the bar and the house. It was true, Denzel did a very thorough job of cleaning. When she asked him if it was his mother who taught him how to clean, he answered no. Days later, Cloud told her about the woman who had taught Denzel how to clean. Tifa was a little hurt that Denzel had told Cloud and not her. It troubled her. Why does he talk to Cloud and not me? One day, she tried asking one of the older children who came into the bar. His answer was that boys were just like that. There really wasn't anything to worry about. They were just a normal family. The answer didn't make her understand, but the words normal family relieved Tifa. After the bar was closed, Cloud, Marlene and Denzel sat around their usual table. You could say they resembled a young father and his two children. If Tifa sat with them, she would be welcomed with smiles. Cloud had a map spread out on the table. He always made sure to check the routes that he intended to use to make deliveries the next day. Denzel and Marlene were sorting receipts. When there were any words that Marlene couldn't read, she would ask Denzel. He would then teach her like an older brother. When there were words that even Denzel couldn't read, he would ask Cloud. He had this habit of handing them a pen after telling them how to read them. He said that if they couldn't write it, then they wouldn't be able to remember it. Looking at the names of places on the receipts, the children would ask Cloud what they were like. Cloud's descriptions were concise. There are a lot of people. There are a few people. There are a lot of monsters, so it's dangerous. Taking the north route is safer. They were descriptions that would make you ask, is that all? But the children seemed satisfied. Soon, Tifa wanted to talk too. When she added more detail, Denzel would ask Cloud if it was true. It annoyed Tifa a little, but she thought it was fine. That's probably what normal families are like. Tifa wondered if they became a real family after Denzel appeared. Cloud was clearly taking less jobs. At night, he would always make sure he had time to spend with the children. The silly little conversations he had with Tifa were also back. Did you fix the problem? Which problem? Your problem. Oh. Cloud thought about it. It's okay if you don't want to tell me. I can't really explain it well. Cloud searched for the right words. I haven't fixed the problem. Well, I don't think I'll ever fix it. You can't retrieve lost lives. But maybe we can save the lives who are in a crisis now. Maybe even I can do it. You mean Denzel? Yeah. Hey, do you remember what you said when you brought Denzel here? What did I say? You said Denzel came to my place. Well. Cloud had an expression like a kid who thought he was about to get scolded. Tell me. I'll decide whether I should be angry or not after I listen. He nodded and continued. Denzel had collapsed in front of Aerith's church. That's why I thought Aerith led him to me. Cloud couldn't look at Tifa. You went to the church? I didn't intend to hide it from you. But you did. I'm sorry. You didn't do anything wrong. I'm not saying you couldn't go, but next time, I'll go with you. I understand. 
in a cloud. You're wrong. Cloud looked at Tifa with a puzzled expression. Aerith didn't bring Denzel to you. Uh, I only thought that- You're not listening to me. Aerith brought Denzel to us. He gazed into Tifa's eyes again, and finally smiled. It had a kindness to it, as if to say, everything will be alright now. Days after having that conversation, Cloud left. Was the future I saw in that smile just an illusion? Tifa kissed her sleeping children goodnight and went into Cloud's office. She brushed away the faint layer of dust from the photo they had taken as a family. She picked up the phone and dialed. After several rings, the messaging service took over. <laughs>